Now that the silt has settled, the Sunken Kingdom and its secrets have been laid bare. We finally have some much needed answers and the history of the Sea of Thieves is coming together, but following these answers, we now have even more questions. The Merfolk and the Ancients, the two balancing forces of the Sea of Thieves. They worked in harmony, where the Ancients coveted the magic and treasure of the seas. The Merfolk needed their strength to protect them from the various threats, like Krakens and Megalodons. The Mer provided access to spells and secrets, in exchange for the might of the warmongering Ancients. Before settling behind the protection of the Shroud, they were a race that fought and destroyed one another. Very convenient for a peaceful species, such as the Mer. Their relationship blossomed for hundreds or even thousands of years, to the point that giant areas were constructed to enable the two races to meet, such as Tribute Peak and the shrines found in the Ancient Isles. Balance was established in the Sea of Thieves, where the Ancients became powerful, forgetting how to fight in their status of complacency. The Shroud had shut out the outside, after all. But one Ancient, the Warrior, an extremely powerful human remained, seemingly revered by his kin to be the one to take up the sword if need be. The Warrior, while versed in the arts of brutality, fell in love with the Sea Queen, the Queen of the Mer. This love was a forbidden love. Merfolk and humans were not to be wed, which caused a great pain between the two lovers. One day, the warrior was hunting, only to be stalked by another ancient known as the High Priest. The High Priest wished to bring an end to the warrior and shot him with a poisoned arrow, but the warrior was too powerful and defeated the High Priest by tossing him off a cliff. The Sea Queen, wishing to overcome the forbidden love, had a plan. She knew the old magic of the mermaid gems would be able to turn the human into a mer, and wished to use this magic on the warrior so they could be together. The Merfolk Elders warned her, the magic was forbidden as it would ruin the balance of the Sea of Thieves, but both her and the warrior believed their love would overcome the consequences. And so, it was decided. In the Shrine of Ancient Tears, the ritual began. The mermaid gems were used to change the warrior into the Sea King, to be with his love for all eternity. Calamity ensued, causing the Sea Queen and her kin to lose their song, losing what made them mer twisting them into the sirens we see today. This great event was known as the Whispering Plague. The Sea King and Queen's love had overcome this curse, but at a terrible price. They were exiled by the Myrrh, as their plague could be passed on with as little as a scratch. They both had what they wanted, but were forced to live isolated, one species becoming two, familiar friends, now strangers. For a time, the Sea King and Queen would have lived in peace, even being cut off from their kin, but the Ancients and Merfolk schemed. The new sirens had upset the balance of things, and through fear or devotion, the Ancients and Mer decided to destroy the Sea King. The powerful warrior was now siding with the sirens, and could bring an end to their existence, and by extension, the Sea of Thieves. The Ancients, now cowardly and soft, hatched a plan to trick the Sea King, to ensure the safety of both human and Mer kind. The High Priest ventured to their domain, on a ship, and using his magic, mimicked the Siren Queen's song and lured the Siren King to the surface. Him and his henchmen dragged him aboard the vessel and tied him up, sailing back to their temple. The Sea King was killed and his bones scattered around the chest of sorrow, and his soul snatched, then bound to his new prison, cursing it to flood with tears, weeping for his lost love. The vile ancient sealed the chest away to ensure he could never be unbound from his prison. The Siren Queen, when she learned about this brutal act, flew into a rage. This was a fury that boiled the sea, and she commanded her sirens to drag the ancient ships below into her sunken kingdom. The sirens clawed at the hulls, dragging the ships down and the crewmen with it, into the depths. The sailors kept alive were turned into her ocean crawlers with the magic of the gems, forever changed by the harshness of the ocean. She relentlessly attacked the Ancients and Merfolk alike. The Ancients now made complacent by the Shroud, couldn't stand against the Siren Queen, and the Merfolk were never built to wage war. The Sirens were on the brink of victory after many years of war, until a new warrior, tired of the conflict, took her sword and swore to bring an end to the Sirens. She disappeared into the deep, a legendary warrior and the Ancients' only hope. She returned some time later, victorious but at a great cost. The Sirens were forced to slumber through means unknown to us, and so Balance returns to the Sea of Thieves. Thousands of years later, Dimitri, a young sailor happened upon the legendary vessel, the Silver Blade, abandoned but very much seaworthy. They commandeered the ship, becoming the second crew to sail it in the Sea of Thieves, unbeknownst of the fate that had found its previous captain. During one of the crew's many adventures, the crew discovered a vault, unlike one they had ever seen before. The vault contained a huge pile of gold, but what was most peculiar was a pile of old bones and a chest that would cry uncontrollably. They took their plunder, bones and all, onto their ship. However, they were pursued relentlessly by skeleton crews, either keen to recover the ship for their master or something else aboard the vessel. 
the crew fled to open water, thinking they'd escape the skeletons. But soon after they found salvation, in the open sea, they had awoken something long dormant in the deep. Sirens began clawing at the ship, just as they had done millennia ago, dragging the silver blade down below only to discover the truth of what happened to their king. His song, echoing from the past, had awoken them from their slumber, believing their king had returned, only to find his bones and the remains of his prison. The Siren Queen was back, and her thirst for vengeance remained unquenched. She eventually met with Davy Jones, who promised her revenge and would summon her daughter, the Kraken, in exchange for her fealty to the Dark Brethren. Some months later, following her defeat and possible death, a crew conquered the remains of her kingdom and was offered a quest by the Bilge Rattler Rinner to recover a sealed chest locked away by a scholar and Humphrey the Gold Hoarder. The crew retraced their steps, finding keys to unlock the chest until they arrived to where it all began, the Shrine of Ancient Tears. The last key was recovered, and upon opening the chest, they would discover a large relic in which would fit the altar next to them in the shrine. The crew opened the vault to reveal one last book left behind the scholar. It details the events of the Siren War and how the female warrior saved the ancients. She made a great sacrifice to defeat the Sirens. On her quest, she had come into contact with a curse, a curse that couldn't be allowed to spread to her kin. She had been afflicted by the curse of Sunken Sorrow. And so the ancients, grateful for her victory but worried for what the curse entailed, sealed her in the vault to stop the spread. Those who seek the Sunken Kingdom will be cursed all the same, and the scholar left a warning for those who want to follow behind. Those who venture into the sunken kingdom, walk the path and bear the curse, shall become a legend of the deep.